Welcome to OOD Works, the podcast, a show about unique individuals and the services provided by Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, the state agency that helps individuals with disabilities find a job and be more independent. Here's your host, Kim Jump. If you're listening when this episode first airs, it's Direct Support Professional Week, September 8th through the 14th, 2019. On behalf of Director Kevin Miller and everyone at OOD, we want to offer our sincere appreciation for direct support professionals and the work they do to support individuals with disabilities in employment. OOD truly could not do it without our provider network of nearly 400 providers throughout the state. Today's episode features one of our providers, and I'm pleased to introduce you to this episode's guest. Paul Bogdan is a focused 22-year-old who lives in Bowling Green. As you listen, you'll hear how Paul has grown due to his own determination and because of the champions in his court, including his OOD vocational rehabilitation counselor, Harvey Allen, several job coaches, the Wood County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Positive Community Connections, and certainly his Aunt Kathy. Justin Duell is with Positive Community Connections, a division of Wood Lane Residential Services in Bowling Green. Justin is an employment supervisor, and he's worked in adult services for 18 years. He's also a pastor in Deschler. Justin talks about his work with Paul, as well as the dedication of the entire team. So let's get started. Up first is Paul's aunt, Kathy Crudell, to give us some background information. So Kathy Crudell is Paul's aunt, and Paul has lived with Kathy for three years now? Three years last May. Mm -hmm. Three years last May here in Bowling Green. Um, And something that surprised me about Paul was that he was actually born in Russia. Yes. My sister and brother-in-law had been married about 16 years and couldn't have children. We had three failed adoptions in the U.S., and they decided to go overseas. And originally, we thought we were getting Paul and Juliet, who were two and four. And last minute before they made the trip, they found Katie, who was seven, in an orphanage for school-age children. And they redid their paperwork and made the trip to Moscow. As my sister said, she spent a year in Russia one week, and... Uh, picked up the three kids and brought them home to us just before Christmas in 2001. It must have been a very special Christmas for your family. It truly was, and it was a very uh, learning experience, interesting. The kids were very literal. Uh, One of my favorite stories is Katie, who came home one day and said, I'm not going to school tomorrow. And my sister said, well, why? And she said, they say it's makeup day. I know wear makeup. (laughs) (laughs) and so it was learning to try to communicate the English language is different it was a real challenge learning how to communicate how was it that Paul came to live with you three years ago Paul stayed with me the summer before um, we graduated on the way home it's a three-hour drive I told him I had two goals for him that year I wanted him to get his temps and I wanted to get him into a reading lab to try to improve his reading skills. Uh, Paul <clears throat> was reading at about the first grade level, and he w- was trying to pass the test to graduate, and he kept missing it by one or two questions. And they said they would give him a waiver. And Paul said, I don't want a waiver. I want to pass it. No, Quill Beasley. <laughs> no. No, you do not. <laughs> and so he came over, and... His comment in the car was, I don't read. You know that. How am I going to pass the temps? Just didn't seem like something possible for you at the time? I didn't enjoy reading and <clears throat> didn't basically want to do any yeah. involves reading. I told Paul, give me a break with your electronic ability. There's an app on your phone and I'll study with you every night. Mm. And I said no more. And about a week later, he showed up at my side and said, okay, I found the app. You ready to study? <laughs> you knew you knew what it would take mm-hmm. how to use what he was interested in. Mm-hmm. And 
he did. He studied and studied. He took the test six times that summer, mainly because the people in the testing center were talking about everything and anything, and he's trying to solve their problems instead of taking the test. I told them, you know, he needs to concentrate. They were quiet for maybe five minutes, and he came out and passed the test. But people walked in, and one man walked in and said, what, where's the best pizza in town? And Paul was doing pizzas. He wasn't doing his test anymore. <laughs> right. So, right. He, yeah. But he needed you to help make it clear mm -hmm. what, what he needed to succeed. Mm -hmm. You were advocating for him. So it went on for maybe two more weeks. He looked at me one day and said, did you find me a reading class? And I said, yes. Well, did you enroll me? And I said, no, you're an adult papers on my desk at work when you're ready. That afternoon he jogged from the house to my office and filled out the paperwork himself and enrolled in the class. Went home and passed the test to graduate. That's awesome. On the way home he said, when I graduate, I'm moving to your house. We began employment services about two years ago, our program did, and uh, we would get referrals for individuals um, to find employment in the community. And um, Paul's name came across our desk uh, from his uh, service and support coordinator, uh, Amanda. And Amanda reached out to us to do some job coaching with Paul at Kroger uh, because uh, Paul also works full-time at Kroger um, as, long, uh, as well as um, doing the uh, C imaging uh, work that he does. So we were asked to go in and just do some coaching to see how he's doing at Kroger, doing some follow-up. So that's how we became acquainted and met was through uh, our job coaching at Kroger with Paul. Um, I was trying to apply for other jobs, but couldn't get the other jobs that I applied to. And then basically um, we saw Kroger's and saw they was hiring basically, and applied to there to be a nighttime stock boy, but the person who told me basically said, um, you know, it'll be a good area because he has big words, and I would understand the big words. Then after that, he said he could call us back in, in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whenever he could, and struggle with it. one up close, um, person who works up front, the supervisor at the front, and she he checked with her, and he called us back probably in 30 minutes or 20 minutes, don't remember it's one. But he called back and said, um, it's an open position up front to be a back, because the clock, it's basically a bag up. That's everything in the store, basically. <laughs> and then we, I got that, basically, before Justin came around, I had another job coach before him. Basically, my first job coach um, was, was getting, moving to a different department, to a uh, high up class, mm -hmm. then he moved. Then I got been there like for whatever two years or three years. Don't remember how long it was when he left. I think in March because I really didn't need him as much. Because the only time I needed him best the job coach is for reading the career parts. The career parts, the tricky parts for me to read anything to understand anything. Mm -hmm. And then after that, basically I, I picked up skills faster easily than most people can pick up the skills. I, if I see one thing, I can mark it easily after yeah. watching one time, basically. Mm -hmm. And basically, I had another person who trained me, who worked out. Now he doesn't work there anymore, but who trained the job coach to train me, basically. Um, that's the text, what we do for being a bag up, because the clock, basically. And got, we went, by, went through there, and then after two years, I think, with my Justin, since then, just came in to see one of the old Krogos and then someone else came along. Yeah, we, we basically just observed for like two weeks um, watching Paul work. And um, we came back to the SSA and we said, look, w there's no reason for us to be here. Um, Paul is doing a fantastic job. Um, there are no issues that we're seeing um, that needs to be addressed. Uh, we would stop in and just see him once a month if needed. Um, if he needed anything at all, and we didn't find that there was really anything uh, Paul Paul needed, um, and so we 
um, just began to have conversations uh, with the SSA and with Kathy and with Paul. And for those who don't know what an SSA is. A uh, service coordinator, uh, county board uh, service coordinator, Amanda. Um, she she had uh, approached me and said that Paul was very interested in photography and that was a passion of his. Mm -hmm. And she said she would really like for us to pursue that as an employment option for Paul. And so, Paul, that was something you, you and Amanda must have spoken about. Because she, she let Justin know that. Basically, it was her work, but I had other jobs I like to do. But photography, I was enjoying more because right. more changing scenery. But could, basically, at Kroger's, I would do that instead of working at Kroger's. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you had your footing at Kroger, but yet you had this strong desire to do something that you really loved with photography. Is that right? Yeah, photography. I like other things, but I know I want to get other areas more because the other areas more require more reading and I don't like to read as much. <laughs> yeah. And reading's a, uh, challenging for you. In the mix, yeah. It depends. Yeah. It depends what it is. If it's big words, I want to understand it. Sure. <laughs> sure. So you're you're aware of where your strengths and your interests are mm -hmm. your interests are. Mm -hmm. So okay, Justin. So Amanda lets you know that and then kind of mm -hmm. what are you <laughs> thinking at that point? Well, I thought it was a really cool um goal. You know, a lot of people that we have worked with haven't had a specific goal in regards to, you know, some of our folks have been interested in in cleaning jobs and your more traditional um, you know, uh work um manual labor kind of positions that a lot of people are interested in. And so for us, this was a u really unique opportunity that, you know, Paul came to us and said, Hey, I, I really am interested in this line of work. And, um, our, our agency is very committed to helping people find the jobs that they want. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the, in the area of interest that they have. So we've been very successful in helping people find, you know, what they want to do. Uh, and support them in that. And we're very confident that every person that we've been able to place in the community in their jobs have found what they've wanted to do. And so for Paul, it was something that was a challenge because the labor market is not necessarily the most, it's not a huge labor market for right. photography. Um, so we basically um, met with the OOD counselor and um, with Amanda and Kathy and Paul, and we sat down and began to discuss about a work goal in photography, mm -hmm. and that's where it all started. And so that didn't it didn't intimidate you in the slightest. The, no, the, the no. Paul's goal was outside of the realm of what you typically would be working toward as far as goals go. Correct, um, because it is his passion. It's his goal. So as a provider, our main responsibility to anybody is to make sure that we're pursuing the goal for that person. It may not be exactly what they want, but we're going to do our best to get as close to that goal as possible mm -hmm. and, and to pursue that at all costs to make sure that that person has exhausted all options within their goal of what they want to do. So Paul, let me just turn to you for a second. What is it that you love about photography? Uh, basically when I was young, every time we had a family thing gathered up, or we had something going on. The matter is weddings, or was friends' wedding, or my cousins, or family, whoever has the going on at a party. I basically, the one who grabbed their camera and took a lot of pictures, basically. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. My first camera was always like, I think six. I don't know is the age limit, but. But pretty small. Yeah, I was small. You started taking pictures. Basically, they gave me my first party, basically, a film camera. And then I took, I used all the film up in one day. <laughs> 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 you used all the film up in one day? Yeah. It wow. Was the film only could have 20 pictures. And okay, so then did they decide you needed digital? Uh, it was not setting guys to turn it on at that time. <laughs> it was uh, film camera, not film, it was buy me film camera, and the rest of the film we had all the smart cameras that uh -huh. uh, digital cameras, then they let me use their camera for a while, then they got upgrades. I still had no digital camera yet. Then down the road, they finally bought me one. Then one time, my mom said, don't bring it with me to the zoo, but I did anyway still. <laughs> <laughs> so you would you would sneak a camera to different events where you knew there would be good like photo opportunities? Is Some, that right? <laughs> depends. If I know it is, because if it's not long drives, I don't have long drives. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, when we went to the zoo, 
um, took some pictures. Then that day, I lost the camera. Then I had no camera for a long time. When I had my first digitized camera, I, bet, I think I had it for like two years. And after two years, basically, um, they had no camera for a while. It's my mom's camera or my other aunt, not aunt with us today, basically. But no, I don't. She let me use her camera. Then she got an upgrade. Then my other aunt, not aunt, my cousin got another camera. Then the whole family got a digital camera. And then one year, they all chipped in. Basically, they got me another digital camera. <laughs> <laughs> because they they knew they saw the talent there and they knew you loved it i think so i don't remember <laughs> yeah but so you're kind of the designated family uh photographer you had been for a long time it sounds like mm -hmm. but i have other talents i like to do but if i can do one job if i can invent something or do pictures or pick something up i'd rather do pictures for what for now yeah <laughs> gotcha so so Justin, that became a goal, mm -hmm. and then kind of where did how did you guys move that forward? Sure. So we would have we had multiple meetings um, with the OD counselor and the SSA and with Kathy and Paul, and we would sit around a table and we would discuss you know uh, Paul's goal. It was interesting to see when I first met Paul, he was very quiet, um, not very um, interested in engaging in a lot of conversation. Um, just um, we would go to the meetings and. Uh, when we'd ask Paul what he'd want to do, he really wouldn't give us much of a response. Um, and I think a little bit of that was just his his perception of whether or not we were committed to him. He had to get to know us mm -hmm. as well to know if we were committed to uh, his goals of what he wanted to do. Yeah, would you would you say that that was the case? That you were just kind of you held back until you felt very comfortable and kind of believed that um, Justin was going to be able to help you. Basically, if I'm not coming with people, I don't talk much. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. I can always easily. Yeah. So eventually, you must have gotten pretty comfortable with with S Justin and and others and S Amanda. Slowly by slowly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, he 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 became comfortable with us. Not not too long. It wasn't too long to break that shell. But he he really began to as as we would go to the meetings, um, we would just share with him like you know, what we were committed to helping him with. And when we would share that with him, you could see him getting more and more excited about, he would share with us the kind of camera he wanted to have, the kind of computer he would need for his software uh, to do the job that he's looking to do. And um, one of the things he said to us at one of those meetings, he said he had three goals. And the three goals that he had was one, he wanted to do video upload. Number two, he wanted to take uh, shots of, of, um, pictures. And the third thing was he wanted to own his own business. Wow. So you, you knew what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So he, he basically, yeah, he specific. was very specific in what he wanted. Um, when we were meeting with the counselor, uh, one of the things was that there was some hesitation on writing the goal, um, due to the labor market. Mm -hmm. Um, I know within OOD, there's a, a strong pull towards with the labor market is, good that's an area of, right. of 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 um that's an area that we want to pursue and if it's something that the labor market's not looking good um in that area sometimes there's more of a push of let's not pursue that uh, which i understand both aspects of sure. that um however with the people first attitude uh, that our culture is really trying to produce one of the things that we really try to do is make sure that we're focusing on that person's goal yeah. uh, whether the labor market looks good or not it's we need to exhaust that first before we move on. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the meetings, um, there was conversations and basically I, I made the comment that if I can find him a job, can we, can we write him a goal? Mm -hmm. a, a job in photography? In photography. Mm -hmm. If I can find him a job in photography, can we write him a goal? And, um, the counselor said, yes, if you can give me some tangible things that I can see. Yes, I will write a goal for this. So about three days later, I was in my office and I was sitting there and I was honestly, I was praying about where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And I was just asking God for some direction on what I'm supposed to do. And I felt in my heart, I needed to go to a realty here in BG. And, and that's something you're just comfortable doing. Like calling up like, Hey, mm -hmm. I know someone that needs a job. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Stop in making wow. your relationships with the community, um, getting to know people, letting them know what the, 
you know, the kind of employees they will be getting and meeting with um, businesses is one of the things I, I really do. And I do enjoy that because I get to make relationships with the community. And so I went there and I introduced myself to uh, the folks who are working at this um, agency. And I said, hey, who uh, who takes the pictures of the homes that you that you are trying to sell? And they yeah, gave like for their website for their website MLS and mm-hmm. all that kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they gave me a name. Uh, a gentleman's name is uh, Craig Magrum. And I said, OK, I said, I'd like do you have his contact information? And they said, yes. Well, prior to that meeting, I had spoke with Kathy a few times and I said um, she said she lives next door to a gentleman who owns his own business. And it was a growing business. And. After I got the card, I thought about it for a minute. So I immediately called Kathy. I said, Kathy, I said, what is your next door neighbor's name? She said, his name's Craig Magrum. No way. And I said, (laughs) I need to meet with Craig Magrum then. So I immediately took the card and I called Craig. And I said, Craig, can I have coffee with you? I'd like to buy you some coffee. Um, You give me the day and the time. I said, I have something I'd like to talk to you about. I shared a little bit briefly over the phone of what we were looking at doing. And he said, I would absolutely love to sit down and meet with you. So within a few days, uh, Craig and I were sitting in Perrysburg having coffee together. And uh, little did I know, Craig used to be the DJ for the Christian radio station that I used to listen to when I was a young man. So we, we made a connection immediately and we began to talk to each other about just this opportunity that we were looking at for Paul. So I remember that conversation with Craig and he said to me, he said, I would bring Paul on in a private contractor role and I'd like to have him upload the videos that I take sh- Uh, pictures of of the homes and he said the third piece I'd like to do is I'd like to train him on how to take the shots in the homes so within that one set down meeting all three goals that Paul had were met within a matter of a half hour Mm -hmm. and so immediately my I just was so overwhelmed with joy and and I just called the team I said we have to get a meeting together as soon as possible and I said, I've got some amazing news. We have we have a job lead. We have what Paul wants, and we need to pursue it. So we met back with the counselor, the SSA, with Kathy and Paul, and um, we said we have a we have a job. We have something we can get started doing as soon as possible. And so the counselor wrote the goal that day, and we, um, I believe, began coaching Paul on the site within two weeks from that day, and. Um, Paul has now been there, I want to say close to a year. Do, it'll be a year in November. Um, he'll be there one year, and he still is doing the internship with the shoots on the sites, and he is also doing all the video upload for the business of C Imaging, and he is um, doing that in a pri- private contractor capacity. So um, we've seen extreme growth out of Paul. Um, he is, um, his quality of the uploads is on point. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. So we really are very proud of Paul in regards to, he has, he has proven himself and he has worked very hard, um, in his, his goal that he has had in photography to be successful in this business. How did it feel for you, um, Justin, to have mm-hmm. all of that come together so quickly? Sure. I mean, number one, I was uh, in awe of God's goodness in this because I had really, I didn't have much to do with it. It's just a guy sitting behind his desk praying for direction. And then, you know, you just feel in your heart to go to a certain place and begin to have conversations. So for me, it was pretty humbling. Um, and the second piece was, I mean, it was just very exciting, a s- exciting feeling of, Not so much that we were trying to, I don't know, prove anybody wrong, but we wanted to prove Paul right. We wanted to show that, you know, people that have goals, we need to pursue those goals 100%. And if if we don't make the goal, that's okay. But as providers, we have to do what we can to invest ourselves in that person to make sure that what they're looking for is we're trying to help them obtain that goal. And, and achieve that goal. So um, for me, it was a, a sense of um, a great accomplishment, but also um, it's, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, yeah. and, you know, our, 
our coaches went in and worked with Paul and um, we, we don't really know much about photography. Paul was teaching us as we were coaching him. Um, we had one coach who had some photography background, which was a great asset to our team to be able to help us um, move forward with Paul and help in any kind of coaching that we needed to do. Um, but yeah, it was just a great feeling for all of us. That's tremendous. And I love, I love a Justin when you said that we wanted to prove Paul right. So it's been a year, almost a year that you've had your photography business and, but then you also do still maintain the employment at Kroger. Like yeah. part time, right? No, it's part time busy. It's mostly oh. Oh, seven okay. to three hours in the mornings. I walk across the only days from when I was a boy. Didn't change it until I need to change. Basically, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays off, days off. Oh, so you stay fairly busy then. And basically, I do other jobs also besides Krogos and doing Craig's job. <laughs> I rather do the turn Craig Krogos soon as when I can to switch over to just do photography. Because that's really your passion. It's more. I just like to do pictures because each time we take a picture, you don't know where you could take pictures of or the scenery we, or the background or you don't know where you'd be at to take pictures of. That's why I enjoy taking pictures plus you don't see the scenery. Yeah, the, the scenery is always changing. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to repeat each day, waking up in the morning, do the same thing going on. Well, yeah, I so the like variety. The <laughs> yeah, the changing pace, yep. the variety. That really speaks to you. Yeah, I don't like to do the same thing going on because it is boring afterwards. Okay. After a year or a month or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for you, you knew that about yourself though, right? That you wanted to have that kind of variety in your work life. Mm -hmm. I just did When I was growing up, basically, if I did any jobs, I did the other jobs while I was young, but I didn't like to keep one task, like doing one, focus on one subject because it gets boring enough to focus on one subject. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So tell me, what is it, what's it been like working with Justin and Harvey and, and Amanda and just kind of the whole team that's basically the, you know, the Paul supporters? What's that been like for you? Uh, <laughs> I had <think about> it. <laughs> <laughs> it went up and down for the first time because, we you know, what time we started, basically. And then slowly by slowly, we got into it and it's gone good so far. <laughs> yeah. But it did not all just happen at once. When no, you it say it started like slowly three, and three weeks after or two weeks depends on what it was the time I was doing. If it uploading in basically like two two houses a time or uploading or three or four houses on time depends on the, what we did. And slowly by slowly went out with him, took the pictures with him. And if I'm not working or if he has not as packed, if it's not packed as much, I jump on with him. Because they don't watch the time or being rushed on the gate because I'm a new person for him to hire you jump on. That's why basically. <laughs> okay, and you're and you mean like with Craig, right? Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Justin and uh, Amanda basically. Um, we basically started from the beginning. Basically, it's first it was slow because we had fun. We didn't know who to get basically like another person, job coach, another one. Because we had to go look through all the paperwork and then. Amanda said she had a person she who helped someone else before, and since then we we tried Justin it, and it's so it's going good. <laughs> good, that's awesome. Well, when this podcast is going to air, it's going to be Direct Support Professionals Week, and it's really a time when we, you know, we we recognize those sometimes behind the scenes kind of efforts from people like. Justin that are there in your court that are cheering you on that are that are um, helping individuals like yourself that need that kind of support um, what would you say to individuals who are considering getting um, hooked up with services through OOD with a job coach would you encourage them to keep an open mind and try it um, if you can um, if you have time and patience um, and have a goal it's worth it, but if you can't wait a long time, just keep this wait for it, push you through the moment, basically give you a week. If it's then not trying to throw it, just give you basically try and wait for a month and after a month if it's dead and work, then you can quit, but just don't quit right away, basically. Don't quit <laughs> right away. Just give it a fair sh a fair try yeah. from the start. Yeah, basically if you can give it basically a month and after a month it doesn't work, then you know it's not meant to be. But if it does work out a month, just keep going and keep going. Yeah. Enough, you can do it. 
I think you have to, um, with job development especially, you have to come out from behind the desk and meet people. You have to take that effort. Um, you know, it, it takes time. It takes it takes that effort. But I think you do um, a big piece of job development is is um, developing relationships that you're not looking for anything in return but to value people. So when you go into a business, I'm not looking for the business to hire anybody. I'm looking to go in and build relationships with the businesses just to let them know they're valued as people and as a business. So I think when you go in without any motives of trying to get something from somebody, the, the arms are a little bit more extended open to uh, hearing the heart of what you want to do. So, you know, when you're going in and meeting, if you're having dinner someplace, um, you know, have your business card with you, go up to the manager and introduce yourself yourself tell them how great the meal was you know tell them how much you appreciate them and and mean it uh, don't just do it just to try to be doing a business pitch but really show investment in your community and um, when you have that love and value for people in your community uh, it shows and then when you come in with a person that is looking for employment um, it's the same thing you're not trying to sell that business anything you're trying to um, basically put the person you're working with on that pedestal that they belong on and show that employer that this person has value and this person can bring value to your business. And, you know, whether it works out or doesn't work out, that's okay mm -hmm. um, because it's not about always the outcome. It's about valuing people. So that's just something that we've learned. Um, and what I love is, uh, I do have to say this very quickly, is – Without Amy, uh, Autumn, and Jenna, our three job coaches that go out and do the work and work with the community and work with our individuals, none of this is possible. Um, they are the hands and feet of the organization doing exactly um, what needs to be done to uh, continue those relationships with the community. You know, I may be the introductory piece and keep contact, but when they go in and show the hard work ethic on their end, and when they go in and show the value that they have in the employer and in the, and in the, in the individual that they're serving, then man, that makes a whole world of difference. Um, so I'm very a small piece of that puzzle. They, they are the real um, you know, warriors that go out and work and build those relationships. And, and then on top of that, you know, your employers that we've worked with, I can't say enough for Craig. Craig Magram has been an amazing uh, partner with us, um, the open communication he's had with us, and just the value that he's found in Paul as well has been just so, you, you can't put a price on that. And so when you have businesses and um, valuing people as well, and you have individuals going in, like such as Paul, who value Craig and value the work that he does. The, the partnerships are really not hard to, to make um, because everybody's invested in each other. So it's really not about more or less job development as it is people development and caring about people and loving people uh, just exactly where they're at and the seasons that they're in. And then just watching God do what he does and that's bring people together. So that's that's what I think about it. So what's this been like for you as his aunt watching this growth take place? Amazing and scary. Mm. How so? <laughs> How so? Um, at first, there was a lot of pressure that I had to try to figure this out. But when I stepped back and, like I said, my beautician gave me the first kernel and we moved through and Harvey at OOD pointed me to the next one and Amanda to the next and uh, God just let the pieces fall in place. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had talked to Craig um, six months before I talked to Justin and asked him if he would ever consider Paul as an apprentice. And he'd been thinking on it, he told me later, that whole time as to how that might work. And then when Justin had coffee with him, it just all came together. Oh, wow. So you actually knew you and had spoken with Craig about all prior to Justin making that connection. It, it was like six months earlier, and it's just one of those casual, over-the-fence type, neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor questions. Yeah. Well, that's really neat. Paul would like to do something like that. Would you ever consider having an apprentice? And that was it. That was. I didn't yeah. say any more. Didn't mm -hmm. talk to him for about it again until Justin did. So a coincidence <coughs> there is just you know just seeing and stepping back how everything fell together. It yeah. was. It's interesting. Uh, Paul has grown tremendously 
uh, watching him with Harvey last night. We had a meeting at the house, and Harvey literally was down on the floor looking at the equipment and uh, checking out his photography that he was sharing with him. And when when Harvey got ready to go, he looked at me and he said, he's grown a lot. And he has. Yeah. In three years, I would tell you he's probably advanced five to six years of growth. Um, and it's because of his hard work and he's applied himself. Mm -hmm. He wants this goal. Yeah. And he never deviated off of it. He's just dogged about it. Yeah. But certainly, too, you know, I think you need to give yourself some credit pushing him in the right direction, encouraging him in, in some of the areas maybe, you know, Paul, that you're not as quite as motivated about, like reading, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, it also speaks to Paul that there's somebody willing to invest and pay the bill for him. Mm -hmm. And what I've told him is if you don't apply yourself, they'll find somebody else that will. But you're still going to need the skill and you're going to have to buy it yourself. He's come a long way. And I don't think he's done. Yeah. I believe in him. I think he's going to go a long, long way. And I think he just needed an environment where he could grow and where the tools were available to help him. And I'm thankful to all of the different people in the community that have come together on his team. It certainly has him. been a community. It really has. Um, you know, and Positive Community Connections has believed in him and taken him under his wing, Justin's done a fabulous job. Amanda has been very active in promoting and finding the right path to go. Um, Lucille, there's not enough can be said. She was so uh, believed in Paul, and Paul immediately picked up on that. Mm -hmm. And Paul Flores has taken over in that spot. Um, Craig has done a wonderful job. Kim Robinson has been an, a tremendous uh, person in Paul's corner and keeping him going and challenging him at Kroger's. Um, it's just been a real team effort. I'm just kind of the captain that sits back and points him in directions. Mm -hmm. Justin, what's your favorite thing about working with Paul? And what have you learned from Paul? Sure. Um, I, I've really enjoyed um, Paul's personality, um, just getting to know him. Uh, he's become a friend, um, and he's... Uh, just a very hardworking, diligent person who, um, you know, I can I can call Paul and he is uh, so quick to uh, get back with me and his his uh, he's very punctual. So something for me is I've grown just watching him grow as a person and um, you know it's an honor to work with him and see him just uh, doing the amazing things that he's doing and uh, I've just learned a lot just about um, the process of, of just, um, really supporting people in their desires. I've learned a lot about that. And I've learned that, um, when you hear somebody like Paul who says, I want to do photography, uh, you know, to stay locked into that, that with them and, you know, pursue that with that person. And Paul's been that guy who his goal has not changed. He has still wanted to be consistently doing this photography business. And um, so for us as a provider, it's very easy to provide those services with a person who knows what they want to do and is committed to doing it. The ultimate goal for Paul, I know when speaking with him, is to for his photography business to grow to the point where that will be his main income and that he would be able to, you know, sort of focus on that as a full-time position. So I know Paul has created his own business cards and he's marketing some of the work that he does. Um, I know recently they had a, um, the county board put on a, um, a night of, of sharing people's photography, like a, um, like a gallery, uh, downtown. And Paul was one of the highlighted, uh, photographers there. And so he actually sold a lot of his pictures to the community, um, I purchased one as well, and I'm in the process of purchasing it because his prices. We got to bring those prices down. <laughs> but no, his he, he's you know he's your worth. Don't he's, you? Paul? He knows his worth. <laughs> he knows his worth. So you know he's selling some of his his work that he's doing on his own. So the ultimate goal is to be able to branch off and do that full time for Paul. I know that's something that he desires. So I think if he continues to work hard and stays focused in that, he'll be successful in that.
Well, that's it for today's episode. If you'd like to reach out to Paul Bogdan regarding his photography business, he can be reached by email at paul the number two runs at gmail.com. A transcript of today's episode is available at ood.ohio.gov forward slash podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating and review. We're on social media at Ohio OOD. Do you have a disability? Do you want a job? We can help. OODWorks.com.